Good morning everyone and welcome to this service today that is online and uh, it's nice to be with you and thanks for joining us. Uh, we're sorry that we can't be gathered together as we normally do uh, but because of lockdown level 4 we are uh, restricted and thank you for joining us today. I am recording this service on Tuesday morning, so I don't know where we stand regarding the state president's uh, guidance, which we'll receive later on in this week. But for now, we're in lockdown level four. Um, I want to begin by stating the obvious. This is a dangerous time in our lives. This virus is spreading everywhere. It has come close to our homes. Every one of us now knows of someone who has become ill. And every one of us now knows of someone who has died. It has come very, very close. And we want you to know that we are praying for you and that you are not alone. We want you to know, especially those of you who are ill or have a family member or a loved one who is ill, that we're praying for you. We want those of you to know who have lost a loved one or a family member or a friend that our thoughts and our hearts are with you in your great loss. We want you to know that you're not alone. We want you to know that we are thinking of you and praying for you. Please know that. Please also know that there is nothing that can separate you from God's great love. Please don't forget that. Welcome to everyone joining us on in our online service today. This is a combined worship service of the Methodist churches in Bethlehem, Clarence, Kestel and Lindley, as well as the United Church in Freesburg and the Free Church in Seneca. And welcome to you all, and welcome to everyone else who's joining us. Today in our service we are going to be celebrating Holy Communion. And you're all invited. Please join us. Please prepare yourself by, perhaps, during the service, just getting a little piece of bread ready for yourself and a small cup of juice. The Holy Communion will happen towards the end of the service today. Everyone is invited. I'm still on family news and I want to speak about our harvest festival that we have had here in Bethlehem. Uh, it has now come to an end and we want to say thank you so much to everyone who has contributed uh, financially or in giving goods and warm clothing and blankets and 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 support to those who are needy. We want to say thank you so much to you for that. We also want to say thank you to those who have distributed these things amongst those who are needy. We are so grateful for your support and for your work. Thank you very much. We will be keeping you up to date with our financial situation as time goes on. I also want to say thank you to you while we're talking family business. We want to say thank you to you for your generosity over these past months while we've been in lockdown on and off and on and off. But your generosity and your kindness financially and your support has been uh, very good and we are very, very grateful to you for all that you have done to continue God's work 
through our church. We, we are very thankful and we want you to know that. Birthdays, um, Annaline uh, and Robert Hutton celebrate their birthday in Bethlehem today. Uh, Gail de Villiers tomorrow, Barnetze Pekesh and Leandri Masut celebrate their birthday on Friday. In Clarence, uh, Connie Benson celebrates her birthday today. People we are praying for in Bethlehem, uh, uh, they are Thora Spencer, Liesel Pateau, Stevie van Dijk, Margie Pistorius, John Faree, Alfreda Hoerson, Frank Jardine, Residents at Residentia and Sonskane and Bergbroch, Ria O'Connor, Ricky Randall, Eska Maas, Gina Rex, Gloria Dilly, Jeanette Mapp, Gertie Barnard, Johnny Lynch, Alan and Maud Stokes, Carla Balby, Johan Smith and Liesel Berger. The families that we're praying for this week rotationally are Reg Engelbrecht and his family, Nadine and Alan Fair and their family, and Deborah Faree and her family. In Clarence, we continue praying for Leone, Johanna, Ethan, Annelise Swanepoel, Adele, Colin, Sarah and Thomas. In Fariesburg we are praying for Val Huxham's son-in-law and Joan Cookard who is still in hospital. In Kestel we're praying for the Woodendahl family. In Seneca we're praying for Sunette Thompson. And so that's the family news and now we're going to gather together as we sing a beautiful hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Let's sing together. Now let us continue to praise our God as we gather together 
in prayer. Let us pray. Praise my soul, the King of heaven. To his feet we bring our tribute. Our God, how wonderful you are, and how good it is to know you. Thank you that you have given us the ability to grow in our knowledge of you. Thank you that we have seen your handiwork in the mountains that you have created, in the rivers that come from your hand, in the crops of the field, in the animals that we see around us. Thank you that your goodness is revealed to us um, in every area of life. Thank you that you have shown yourself to us in the person of Jesus Christ and that in him we see exactly what you're like that your righteousness reaches to the heavens that your goodness reaches up to the clouds and your love is deeper for us than the oceans are thank you that you look after us and that you care for us that you know everything that there is to be known about us. That you know this pandemic that we're in. And you know how we are dealing with it. Thank you that we are not alone. Thank you that you are our Father. Thank you that we are your children. And thank you that you love us. We pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Our reading today is from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 12, uh, verse 13 to verse 21. Luke, chapter 12, verse 13 to verse 21, and I'm going to read to you from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. And the heading of this paragraph and of the story is the parable of the rich fool. And Luke records it like this. He says, Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, Tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store up all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life 
is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? Jesus concludes this and he says, So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> John Ortberg is one of my favorite authors. And many years ago, I read a book by him entitled, When the Game is Over, It All Goes Back in the Box. And I have reread that book just recently, and I am largely indebted to John Ortberg for the things that I'm going to be saying to you today. I want to begin by referring to the game of Monopoly. Do you remember the game? It's a board game, and by the throw of the dice, you go around the board and you accumulate things and you and you buy hotels and you buy houses and you buy property and and it's all about property money and possessions that's how you take you count score in the game of monopoly and i re will refer to that during my sermon but i want to essentially in my sermon today speak to you and to me about the game of life the game of life somebody a long time ago said that life is a game and I'm not saying that we must take life lightly or that we mustn't be serious about life in fact I am saying that life is a very serious matter. Life is very serious. But as in any game, life is always moving towards a goal. Life is not a series of random activities and events. Life is going somewhere. It has a purpose. It has a goal. And life is a game. And it's going in a direction. And as in any game, there are rules to follow in the game of life. And if we want to play the game of life meaningfully, then we have to follow the rules. And the first and most important rule is that we need to know what matters most in the game of life. Our understanding of what matters most will determine how we play the game. If we get that wrong, then the whole game of life will be affected by our bad understanding of what matters most. It's vital for us to know what matters most in the game of life because that eventually will constitute the difference between winning and losing. I cannot overemphasize how critical it is to know what really matters in the game of life. In my sermon today I want to speak about what matters most and I'm going to make four points today four points and it's all about what matters most in the game of life first thing I want to say is this in the game of monopoly money is how you keep score. Accumulation is the name of the game. 
getting more is what counts. The way you keep score is by counting the money. It's all about money and property and buildings and possessions. The more you have, the stronger you are. The person with the most money and possessions wins the game. In our story today from Luke, it is very clear that the man that Jesus was speaking about thought that he was playing his very own game of Monopoly because it was all about his possessions. So that's the first thing I want to say. In the game of Monopoly, money is how you keep score. The second thing that I want to say is that in the game of life, what matters most to you will always determine how you keep score. God has given us the game of life. He intends for us to live it and to play it, and to live it and play it well. He, he's ordained the game of life for us. We are meant to survive and to even thrive. That is how God made us. So it is a good thing to play the game of life. And the way that it works in the game of life is that whatever is most important to you becomes your means of keeping score of how you're doing think about it when you're at school the game is won or lost in terms of how well you do in your exams when you're at college or university graduation is how you keep score of, of how you're doing Later on when you find a job, success is the way of keeping track of how you're doing in this game of life. Finding a life partner and moving into a comfortable home is a way of keeping score. Having enough money to survive and thrive is how we keep score. Eventually, having a well planned retirement and finding a good place to retire is a way of seeing how we're doing in this game of life. Because in the game of life, whatever matters most to us determines how we keep score of how we're doing in the game of life. That's the second thing that I wanted to say to you. The third thing that I want to say is this. In the game of Monopoly, as in the game of life, when the game is over, it all goes back in the box. That is how it is in the game of Monopoly. It doesn't matter how much you have accumulated how many properties you have, how many buildings you have, how many hotels you have, how many houses you have, how much money you have. When the game is over, it all goes back in the box. Let me talk a little bit now about the game of life. There is nothing wrong with playing the game of life. In fact, God calls us to play the game. And he wants us to play it well. He's ordained that we are meant to live life and to play the game of life and to play it well. That is how he meant for us to be in this game of life. But even in this God-ordained game of life, there comes a time when this game will come to an end. On that day, other people will still be playing the game. 
on that day some people will only be starting out on the game but for you and for me there will come a day when for you and for me the game will end and on that day Everything goes back in the box. I have been privileged in my life to conduct many funerals and it is a holy and it's a sacred opportunity to be with people who have deep sadness when they have lost a loved one. For me it is an absolute honor to be with people when sadness and sorrow are so deep and so intense in their lives and I've always treasured those moments but every funeral carries with it an incredibly profound message and the message for me every time is a reminder of what matters and what doesn't matter every time I do a funeral for me I am reminded again and again over and over what matters and what doesn't matter I have seen some very beautiful boxes I have seen some very plain boxes but it doesn't matter what the box looks like because at the end of the game everything goes back in the box the fourth thing that I want to say is this for all of us, there will come a day when your soul and mine will return to God. And I've been saying that the most important rule in the game of life is to know what matters most. In our reading today, God speaks very, very tough, toughly. And, and harshly to the man who spent his life storing up for himself money and possessions. It's almost unbelievable how God, how tough God is with this man. And God rebukes him and he says to him, You fool! This very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have stored up for yourself, whose will they be? The man in the story that Jesus was telling was obviously playing the game of Monopoly. He thought that what matters most is accumulating things which when all is said and done ends up in the box. For us, there will come a day when your soul and mine will return to God and on that day, your score and mine in the game of life will be counted by our answer to one question. Was I rich towards God? Jesus sums it up when he says at the end of the story, he says, as he comments on the story, he says, so it is with those who store up treasures for themselves but are not rich towards God. There will come a day when you and I will count our score by the answer to one question. Were you and I rich towards God? 
because that is what matters most in life. You see, when we are rich towards God, the presence of God in us influences how we live our lives. It influences the way we think about God. It influences the way we think about ourselves. It influences the way we think about what's important and what's not important. It influences the decisions we make. God's presence, when we are rich to Him, God's presence changes the kinds of people we are. His presence has an impact on our relationships. His presence has an impact on the way we do our jobs. His presence has an in impact on the way we treat our family. His, his presence in us influences everything. Because the most important thing in life, in this game that we're playing, is being rich towards God. As I end, it's worth you and me asking ourselves the question. What is my life all about and how am I keeping score? What is the most important thing in my life? And how is it going with my score? Am I relying on my stuff? Or am I relying on God? Because the truth is that when the game is over, it all goes back in the box. God bless you. And God bless me. Amen. Let us pray together. Our Father, we are so grateful to you that you are a good God, that you are a kind Father, that you love us and that we are very precious to you. We thank you that you are slow to anger and quick to love and quick to forgive. We thank you for that. We ask you today to enable us to be honest with ourselves about the way that we are playing the game of life. And we ask you to lead us in the proper way. And we ask you to show us the way. We ask you to influence us. We ask you to show us what's most important. We ask you to enable us to prioritize what's most important before anything else. We ask you today to be with those who are ill. We ask you to be with those who have lost loved ones. We ask you today to be with our nurses and our doctors, our teachers, our security people, the police. We ask you to be with our government. We ask you to be with our mothers and our fathers. We ask you to be with our children. We ask you to be with us in South Africa. We ask you to touch South Africa with with what's most important in the game of life. And we ask for your mercy and your grace. We need you now more than ever. We ask you for your presence and your grace and your mercy. For the sake of Jesus. Amen. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>
<clears throat> now this would be the place where we would normally ask the stewards to wait upon us for our offerings to the work of God. Instead of that, I just want to um, repeat uh, our thankfulness to you for your generosity and your kindness. Thank you for doing EFTs. Thank you for many ways in which you are supporting the work of God. We really are so grateful to you. Some of you are making sacrifices and we want to acknowledge that. We appreciate that. And now we're going to um, arrange ourselves around the table as we partake in the sacrament of Holy Communion. And I want to remind you that this sacrament is for everyone and anyone. No one is excluded. And I remind you how on the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, blessed it and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this whenever you eat it in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying to them, This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. Drink this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so I invite you to take your little piece of bread, as I do mine, and we eat together the body of Christ, broken for us. We take and eat. The blood of Christ. Together we take and drink. The blood of Christ shed for us. And now let us pray. Father, we thank you for the sacrament and that you have united us again with Jesus Christ. And that you have reminded us again of the banquet that awaits us in heaven. We ask that you will cover us with your love and your protection and your grace. That you will strengthen us and that you will lead us and guide us every day. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now we're going to sing our last song. Uh, be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Nought be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought by day and by night. By night. Waking and sleeping, thy presence my light. We worship together.
Thank you again for joining us on, in this online worship service. And let us end the service together as we say the benediction. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. God bless you. Please keep yourself safe and please trust and receive strength from God every day. God bless you. Amen.